Hello magpies, and welcome back to the Social Justice Player's Handbook, where I arbitrarily assign D&D classes to activist archetypes. You get how it works by now. You're either a hero or you're a villain, and everybody fits into their neat little boxes. It would be a swooping shame if somebody were to, ooh, I don't know, mess it all up by introducing moral shades of grey. Our final base hero archetype is something of a dark horse, the rogue. Being a master of social engineering, he fits into a broad category of being somebody with a particular set of skills and a talent for being underestimated. He could be anywhere or anyone if you're near someone right now, you never know. They might be a rogue. Though rogues straddle the line between hero and villain, they are excellent for party balance. And having a rogue in your party opens doors, figuratively and literally. His character trait is that while other heroes may come across as preachy, obtuse, niche, or generally go against the grain, rogues fit in. You may find him in the branches of government, in fraternal societies of privilege. You may find him manipulating marketplaces, hanging out in a bar on a Saturday night, or just earning a living and supporting his family. He is willing to put in the work to get to where he wants to be before he starts to affect the change he wants to see in the world. The only thing you can take for granted about a rogue is that by the time he gets to where he wants to be, it's already too late to stop him. His greatest strength is his social mobility. He goes where he wants, he does what he wants, he speaks to whomever he wants, but he always keeps his eyes on the prize. This gives him access to people who would normally never associate with heroes. And he is perfectly comfortable rubbing shoulders with villains if they can get him to where he needs to go. Subtlety is his wheelhouse. He can buddy up to villains, he can make deals, speak their language, he can laugh at their problematic jokes without getting offended or preachy. And then, he can leverage the bond he has built to create real-world good. He doesn't bother with, de with dense theory or direct confrontation. When it comes time to act, he can thwart evil with nothing more than a strategic hand on a villain's shoulder and a kind but firm. Come on, bro. Cut it out. You know this shit isn't cool. His weaknesses are tied to his strengths in a nexus of moral grayscale. Being in the company of villains can make him a target for zealous warriors, and a rogue is always at risk of being denied access to adventuring parties by those heroes who don't appreciate the value of subtlety. Furthermore, access to villains is two-sided. Villains, in turn, have access to rogues and can very quickly make them complicit in systems of oppression. Indeed, who among us is not complicit in some way? The ultimate pragmatism of rogues can be their downfall. At the end of the day, a rogue is just living in the moment and making a living such as it is. We need rogues on our side because we can't just kick in every door and neither can we rely on generational change to breed out the bad ideas that threaten us right now. Frequently villains can offer more to aid a rogue in the short term and this is not solved by the tendency of overzealous heroes to attack anyone who looks kinda shady. History is littered with rogues who had to sacrifice their dreams and their ethics for job security, and each one represents an ongoing failure of heroes 
to secure the material conditions necessary to get the every man on board with their quest. Those rogues who abandon their ideals completely are sometimes called assassins. There isn't too much to say about an assassin because he is almost identical to a rogue in every day except for his character trait and his critical weakness being swapped. He uses infiltration, social mobility and takes small victories where he can, just like a rogue. But the assassin is utterly mercenary, taking pay for his services and more often than not just getting a kick out of making people mad and draining their energy as a kind of twisted revenge on the world that his own life didn't turn out the way he wanted. Social vampires, trolls and career capitalists make excellent assassins. You might well ask, is there even a fundamental difference between rogues and assassins? Are rogues just assassins with a conscience? Do assassins just follow a different ethical system where might makes right and the strong consume the weak? Or are assassins just rogues having a bad day? At the end of the day, the key difference is the material outcomes of their actions, and this is downstream from the circumstances of their environment. Ultimately, will a pragmatist even have cause to continue to fight to make the world a better place if he cannot see light at the end of the tunnel? The key to redeeming an assassin, therefore, is to appeal to their pragmatism. Life, liberty and respect, this is all anyone wants. Some of us just complicate things with big theories. If you make his life better, if you show him respect, and if you give him the liberty to be able to do more than just to survive day to day, you will find him more amenable and more willing to concede that making the world better for everyone is in his best interests too. At the end of the day, the interchangeability of rogues and assassins really highlights how dogmatic notions of good versus evil, they just don't hold up in the real world. Thank you, magpies. And from here, we shall shift gear to explore beyond good and evil, beyond the abstract and into the real world of shades in between. We continue next time on the Social Justice Player's Handbook.